Okay, we are starting. All right, I need your focus because we are going to show the steps to factor polynomials when it's a specific kind of polynomial. So, think back to when we named our polynomials. Do you remember what a degree of 2 is? Uh, binomial. Oh, no. It's a quadratic. <laughs> we just saw it in our song. And here is my term that has that makes this a quadratic. It's squared. Next up, the number of terms. is three and what do we call some a polynomial with three terms trinomial. the trinomial uh, you could with your markers because they're kind of thick if they don't fit in the space you could just like put a dot on the outside and kind of color code it that way And the final one, and this is the main thing that keeps us different from how we're going to do other factoring of um, polynomials, the coefficient of the leading term, well not just the leading term, it has to be a squared leading term, so say the squared term is 1. It's an invisible one but you can use your color coding to show it. I used green. So now let's talk about the steps. The steps to factoring success. Step one is draw parentheses and fill in the variable. The factors we're going to get from this is going to be a pair of parentheses. And in this case, because the terms are x, the B and the C would be numbers. We're going to have X here and X here. That would be how you would do step one. Step two, please use your regular pen or pencil because you're going to have, there's like a lot we're cramming into this little box here. Step two, notice what we have here. It's an X puzzle that's blank right now. But we're going to take what we learned about X puzzles earlier in class today and we're going to use these to do the factoring. So here's the directions for the X puzzle. In your X puzzle, place the B in the addition spot. and place the C in the multiplication spot. So I'm going to color code again a little bit here. My B is going to be down here. And my C, whatever the number is that would be here for C, would be going up here in the multiplication spot. 
And because we're keeping this in our notes, but we're not going to put that sheet of um, X puzzles into our notebooks, I want you to show that this is the product and this is the sum of whatever numbers are here, yes? And that's what the puzzle to solve is to find what those numbers would be. <clears throat> Step three, it's a question. What will the signs be? And believe it or not, those silly lyrics we just looked at will help you begin to see the pattern of what the sign will be, as well as the X puzzle. The X puzzle will help you figure it out too. What will the signs be? And there's three possibilities. They could both be plus signs. They could both be subtraction signs, or you could have one of each, and the order could just flip. You could either have plus or minus, or minus or plus. Step four, solve the X puzzle. And put the answers in the parentheses. and I'm just gonna put a parentheses here to show it. And we always check our work. So that is step five. Check your work with a matrix. Nice. Let's do an example on the bottom of the sheet. If you have not cut up with the steps, just pause yourself because you can get it from my notes later. I'm recording this. I want you not trying to catch up on the notes. I want you with me as we do the example. Ready? Please write example down here. And our example is x squared plus 4x plus 3. Step one, draw the parentheses and put the variable inside. So we're going to put two sets of parentheses and we get x and x. Step two, x puzzle. I'm going to use my color coding from up above. And what goes in here is in place for the B, which is a 4. And what goes up above is in place of the C, and that's 3. And now we're going to solve the X puzzle. What are two numbers that when I add them, I get 4, and when I multiply them, I get 3? 3 and 1. And they're both what kind of number? Positive or negative? So our signs are both positive. We're going to have this set here. So we get 1 and 3. The second part of step 4 is to put the answers in the parentheses. So we get plus 1 and plus 3. And we're going to check. Oops, before we do, I want you to box this to show that that is our answer because there's a whole bunch of other stuff on this part of the paper. Those are our two factors. The two things that we're going to multiply to get back to this is x plus 1 and x plus 3. This is the answer because we factored it from this. Think of this as the distributed or multiplied version, and this is the factored version. Make sense? So how do we check? We're going to draw our matrix. And this has x plus 1 on top and x plus 3 on the side. And we're going to fill in our matrix. x times x gives me x squared. 3 times x gives me 3x. What goes in the top right box? x or 1x if you want to show the invisible one and three times one is three. Here's my like terms, what do they combine to? 
So if you see in your check with the matrix, here's my first term and it matches, here's my middle term and it matches, and here's my final term. Make sense? Okay. In your notebook, you guys are going to do some checks. I want you to, we're not, again, we're not gluing stuff in today. Second period convinced me to not collect notebooks today. Find the page where we put this, because we're not gluing today, but I'm, we're writing three problems in there. On the back of this page, you guys are going to turn it and there's nothing on the back of it, yes? And I want you on the back, we're going to glue this here later. Actually, no, yeah, that's right, yeah, let's do that. We're gonna glue this on the left, but on the right side, you guys are gonna do some example problems. Or practice problems. Just three today, and tomorrow's gonna be all about practicing because I'm well aware that you've gotten the information today, but that doesn't mean it's solid in your brains yet. Okay, here are the three examples that I want you to practice with the time we have left. And we'll do the first one together. We're going to factor x squared minus 5x plus 6. Leave yourself some room to do that work and then write x squared minus 2x plus 1. And the final practice problem is x squared plus x minus 12. And let's do the first one together. I'm going to draw a line here to show that that's my workspace for the problem up above. What is step one? Draw the parentheses. So I'm going to draw two sets of parentheses. And I want you to think back to the lyrics. It said draw two sets and put in the variable. variable. Next step is our X puzzle. What goes on top? Six. Six. And what goes in the base? Negative five. Negative five. Now think about what will the signs be if when I multiply I get a positive 6, but when I add I get a negative 5? Negative and positive. Oops, sorry, thank you. Why a negative and a positive? If I have a negative and a positive, when I multiply, am I going to get a positive? Negative 3 and negative 2. It's going to have to be two negatives. Negative 3 and? Negative 2. Negative 2. Next step is to go back to my parentheses and put in what I found from solving my X puzzle. I want to point you guys back to the lyrics here. We have three terms with a plus in the back. What they mean by that, there's a plus back here. Remember I said three terms plus in the back, the signs will... Did we get both of them as a negative? Okay, and now we're going to check it. X minus 3, X minus 2. And I get X squared, negative 2X, negative 3X, and 6. six. Combine my like terms, and I get negative 5x. So my first box is the first term, does it match? My combined like terms is our center term, does it match? And then the final is here. So that's how we check. Who feels comfortable that they can do these last two? I know we probably don't have time right now for both, but you can probably get the, the middle one done. Draw a line for that workspace as well. You'll be tucking everything into your notebook, and we will have time for practice, scavenger hunt, and gluing tomorrow. And I will be collecting notebooks tomorrow.